Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Monday Build. This is David Lemon. I'm the community manager of Groove Digital. And for today, I prepared an interesting, lovely book landing page build. So this landing page can be used for selling books, for promoting books, for uh, actually signs, a sign up for for until the book is not ready yet, so you can receive the signups for uh, for when it's launched, so you have an email list of people you can just send it out to. So this could be a multi-purpose -pur landing page that you can use for multiple di different uses. So yes, it will be amazing. I, I'm pretty sure you will like it. I really love it. It's very simple, very, very clean, and can be built very quickly. And this is the most important thing that I actually like to do whenever I'm building a site, it needs to be quick, it needs to be beautiful, and it needs to be simple. So whoever comes on the website, they don't need to look for the information. It is displayed immediately in front of them in a nice chronological order. And this is what our build will be today. So I am already receiving a couple of people that are joining in on the live stream. So welcome, guys, in case you can just pop into the question, uh, sorry, into the comment box and just say that I'm here, I'm live, I'm watching David. I'm looking forward to seeing those comments. Oh, amazing. So I have already people joining in. I have Ilya saying, yes, bro. <laughs> Eric is watching. Hi, David Lemon. Uh, Tina join Joiner uh, saying, hi, David. Uh, Jim Lush, any big announcement coming today? Yes, Jim, this will be talked about by somebody else from the company and not by me, but I believe so. Um, yes, so we have a lot of different things that are waiting for us this week. We will be um, pushing out a couple of new updates, which are very interesting for some. For some, not so much, but for some, most of you, will be very, very cool to have that uh, insight. Uh, Peter Devet saying, hi, David, great to be with you again. Good marketing, hi, David, Martin here. Hi, Martin, good to have you here. Awesome, so guys, let me just jump in and quickly show you what we will be building out. At this, mo at this moment, I don't have anybody that is showing up as a Facebook user, so the next slide will not make sense. However, this is the site we will be building out today. So this is a simple landing page with a book. Uh, let me just close this Skype so that it is not bothering us. Uh, but yeah, this is a simple lemon book website landing page that we will be building out. And not only this one, but there is a lot more. So your books features and here's what's included and about the author section, testimonial, Pricing, you can add on your different pricing options here, and then this is the end of the page. So this we will be trying to we will try to build out in an hour and a half max. But of course, as I'm talking, explaining some different things, uh, sometimes it gets a bit longer. But this is what we will be building out today. Tell me, guys, if this is interesting for you, if this is something that you would like to learn how to create a page like this. Uh, this is pretty simple. It is very straightforward, as you can see. Only a couple of colors that are repeating the, the, the all the titles and all the text font is just one actual font. I'm using um, white and this a shade of blackish gray. And basically, this is repeated again and again around the whole website. Uh, there is also these gray uh, gray parts, but this is just to actually uh, make some of the parts of the website stand out. So, okay, so Christine, she's here, she's tagging somebody that uh, this build will help them sell, our, sell their books. Um, Guda Marketing saying, yes, this is interesting for him. Uh, David Lemon, good morning. Bye, Michael. Hi, Michael. Good to have you here. Okay, perfect. So this is what we will be building out today, guys. I am pretty sure you have already a purpose for a build like this. It is not very hard to do. As you can see, this is one block over here. It has one column over here on the top. This is where we have our logo and then two columns on here. In this column, we have a book and then over here we have a heading, subheading and a button. Finished. Um, 
So the next block over here is just a pre-designed wireframe block that I just pulled in, changed the fonts, changed the colors, finished. The next one is again a pre-made block that I just pulled in, added in this image of a tablet, and it is pretty simple. This one is just an empty block over here with uh, another column. So basically this is two column layout with some heading, subheading and just the image. This signature is just an actual image. You can just put in your signature over here in case you're the author or in case you are designing it for somebody else. You can just ask the author to do a, a quick scribble on a, on a phone or a tablet or, a, or somewhere and then you can actually use this image as a signature. Testimonials, you can add on here your testimonials about the book. Pricing, in case you're offering different pricing of your books, for example, your ebook is for free, then a soft copy is a bit, you charge something for it, and then a hard copy is, is a bit uh, more valuable, is the price is a bit higher, you can set this up over here. I need to add the, the buttons at this point are not connected to anything. I did the hover color, but my buttons are not going anywhere. So this is the the only site we will be building out or the only page we will be building out today. In case you want to add on to this one, I will show you how to build out this. So the next page, let's say you want to design a thank you page in a similar style, you will know how to follow the same principles, the same fonts, the same colors that we are using. It will be very simple to actually design a thank you page or the upsell page or the downsell page or the opt-in page or maybe a pop-up in case you want to use it. You can use the same type of buttons, the same type of fonts and things like this. Okay, so we have a couple of other people joining in. I have Carol uh, saying hi, David Lemon and everyone. Awesome, Carol, good to have you here. Uh, Eric is also on YouTube. Oh no, he already said uh, hello, David. He is now saying hi to Christine. Um, Katrina Goff, Jay needs this for his book launch. Check it out, awesome. Geraldine Baker saying howdy. Perfect, so guys, we will start with the build. So at this point, I don't have anybody that is uh, a Facebook user that I can see that he's a Facebook user, for, so we'll jump over this one. First, have a look at what we will be building. That is that is check, we already done that. The next one, pull in all the building blocks we need. So let's just jump into our Groove Pages account and then build it out. Let me make the screen a bit bigger for you. Maybe also remove my myself so you can see the whole page. So we come into the Groove Pages over here and we will start just a new site. Okay, we'll start from scratch, from blank template. So the first thing I like to do immediately is go into the site settings and just give it a name. So for example, we can give this a, a name of test book landing page, something like that. So that it doesn't show up as a my new site. This is always uh, very similar to every, every other uh, site that we have on there in case we don't name it. So we'll just do this first and then we can do the rest on the page. Yes, so if we look at this first block, as I mentioned, so this is one empty block with one column over here and then a two column layout over here. So let's just do this one immediately. So wireframe empty, an empty block. And then here we have one column and then over here, we'll, it'll, we will just add another two column layout here below it. So let's just do it this way. And then also above, let's try it out. So this drag and drop feature is going to be changed very soon. Here we go. This is what I wanted to do. And on here, we can add on the background color. So I will add on the background color. It will be just six times. I will press the number three. So one, two, three, four, five, six, bam. This is the gray color that I like to use. This will be the gray color. This will be on multiple places. So this is uh, that gray color, this font, this, 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 uh, this one. So we will just be using this uh, six times. We typed in the number three, and this will be the gray that we will be using. So as you can see, there is a container. And over here, we will place in an image. So an image is in the Elements tab. You scroll down until the media section and then you will see an image over here. So this we pop in into the one column layout. And then over here, we will also have an image. This will be our book over here. And then here we will have 
a heading, um, a subheading, and a button. So we already have things like this. So title and paragraph. We will just use this one. Okay, here we go. So title and paragraph. I'll just quickly make it white so that it's not lost on our page and then we can see it. So this is the actual first part. We will be pulling in all the elements first on, on our site and then we will go in and then style it and design it as we want. Okay, there is a, another button. So we will just come into the elements tab and just find the buttons over here and then pull in a solid button just below this title and paragraph element. There we go. So the first part is done. The first block is designed. Let's just go on to the second one. So the second block is just a pre-made features blocks. And let me just show you which one I used. So if we go into the blocks, wireframes, features, and you scroll down to the bottom of the features, this is the one I use. So there is a headline and then three features. So we'll just pull in this one on our page. And then this is basically it. Now, as you can see, I didn't pull in, um, basically, I didn't separate this, this block and this block um, some, with some spacing. However, I put in a divider. I wanted everything to have a white background, but to be divided with a divider over here. So I will do this one now. Um, over here, just below it, I will pull in a container or a one column, whichever you prefer. I'll just pull in a container, try to pull it, put it below this one. And inside here, I will choose the divider element and pull it inside my container like that. Okay, so my dis divider is I'm actually on this block with the features. So now I can just pull in the second block, which is an image on this side and some uh, heading, subheading and some titles. We have something similar inside the block section, wireframes, and this is call to action. So call to action, we have an image on this side and then head, heading, subheading and button. So I will just use that one because it is looking the most similarly to the one we want to use okay so it looks like it is merged together so it looks because of the same uh, background color because the both blocks have the same background color it looks like it is a one big block but it is actually not so let me just change the backgrounds to white because we will work with white on this part and then white on this part so i will just clicking somewhere over here in the corner and then until this star comes up. When the star comes up, this is uh, this means that we are in the block section, that we are editing the background of the whole part. It's touching this side of the screen and the other side of the screen as well. So here in the background section, I just want to come over here and choose white. Perfect. So now we have two white uh, blocks over here, and then we will just need to pull in the this icon list elements, we will design one and then we will duplicate it over here. So the button we can just easily delete because we don't need a button. However, in the elements tab, we have the icon list items. So we will just pull in an icon list item and this looks like that. Or this is actually not the one I was using. I just made a mistake. Let me just remove it quickly. And then I remember that here is a title, here is a subheading and an icon. So I was actually using this one over here. So icon plus title plus paragraph. You see, this is what the one I was using. It looks like this. I would just remove this, uh, this part of the text because I don't need so much. And then this is how I, re I will leave it. So we will just design this one first and then we will duplicate it so we have actually two below it, okay? The image placeholder is already in place so we can just continue building out this block. So for this block, it is pretty simple because we just need an empty block with these two, actually two column empty block, okay? We'll just pull that below like that and now we can immediately just delete so we click the layout two by two i clicked between the two empty containers over here this is clicking on the layout two by two 
And what I want to do with this is actually remove the gutter. The gutter is this spacing between the two columns. Once I click over here and then choose none, then you can see that these two just merge together. They are touching each other. So this is how we can actually uh, have a, a layout like this one, okay? And then also with this block, I want to make it, uh, I want to remove the spacing because as you can see here, there's a bit of white space. It's very, very small. It is uh, 0.5 REM, but once we remove it, it is actually growing up to be the these check checkered uh, background is going to be touching the the sides of the of this container okay so now i need to choose the container itself and then in the sizing i can make it max width i click on the max width and then come over here to be 100 percent so now this is how we achieve that the image is actually touching the border over here and also this gray gray part sorry is touching the border of this of this screen like that so it is touching over here it is touching the border on this side and also on the other side here now in this part we only have an image and this will be set up just as a background of the container so i will click over here and then set up the background once we are styling it however on this part i want to have heading subheading and an image as i mentioned this is this signature is just an image so let me just pull in those details so we have a title and a paragraph and just an image over here. So in the media section, image, we pull it in below it. And then this will be our actual block. Here we will just place an image as a background and then we are done with that. Testimonials, this will be the trickiest to do because we don't have a testimonial that looks like this one. However, we will create it from two blocks. And I'll show you what I mean by created from two blocks. Um, so in the wireframe blocks, so you click blocks, wireframes, and you come over here almost at the bottom, there is a testimonials uh, tab. We have different testimonials that are in three uh, columns. However, I want to achieve something that looks like this. something that looks like this, but not only once, but three times actually. So let me show you how I did this one. So once I scroll up into empty, I just choose a three. So I took this one with three columns. This is an empty block with three columns. And I will just pull it here below it. And then immediately I will go into the containers and set up the layout to be centered. Okay. so click on the empty container, layout, vertical, center. So here, container, layout, vertical, center. Now, what I do is I just duplicate this, click on it, and just drag it inside here. Click on this part, duplicate, and just drag it inside over here. Then I want this one, duplicate, and just drag it inside over here, okay? I didn't want it here, but here. And then click on this one, duplicate, pull it inside over here, just below the image. And then also this one, duplicate, and just click, drag, bam. So this is how I actually achieved this lovely look where I had three of these testimonials created for from this only one you see it is pretty simple we just wanted to uh, we just needed to make sure that everything is coming up in the center and this is why i clicked on them first and then set up everything to be in the center so now i can just click and then actually duplicate it from here i will just pull over all these details like that oops this is not what I wanted to do, but only here, only this one. And John Doe, duplicate, click, drag it over. Just click on this one, duplicate, click, drag it over. And then another one. I'll just do that quickly because it is basically just duplicating and clicking and pulling it over to the next column. Um, I mean, this can be done by anybody. You don't have to be um, 
a super designer to, to just duplicate elements on the page. It is pretty straightforward. So this is it. Now I am finished with this block, so I can just click on it and then delete it. We are also already have our testimonials, which will be looking like this. one. Let me just quickly save it before we get any problems. And then I will just pull in the next couple of blocks. We have this one, this one, and another one at the, at the bottom. And then I will take a couple of questions. I can see that there is a, a couple of questions that popped into the comment box. So let me just pull in the pricing. So in the blocks, wireframes, there is a pricing over here. And then I will look for something that has three elements. And then I think I use this one over here. You can use any of those that you want. This is just something that I thought could, looks cool. And it has already the heading, subheading, three, or three um, these price points. And then we have most of, this, most of the details we will need. However, I have here an icon. I have here a subheading a description or an explanation and a button. So I need to pull in an icon. So elements, icon, like that. I also need to make sure that it is centered correctly. So I click on the, on the container. It will say container, layout, vertical, center. Also on this one, layout, vertical, center. And then here as well, layout, vertical, center. So it needs to be the container so we can center everything over here. OK, so we have an icon. We have the price over here. We will have this part. So let me just pull in the price like that. Icon, price, explanation, description. And then we will just delete this, learn more, because we don't need it. This is basically how mine one is styled over here so let's just do this on the other ones so this one we will just pull above everything we will just duplicate the icon from here click come on above there we go and then we don't need this learn more we can just simply click and delete it again we just duplicate the icon we pull it over here and we just click here on this price we pull it up like that and then we delete the learn more we don't need that one good so this is basically it this is how my pricing is looking like it's it's pretty simple so then let's go to the next one this one is extremely easy so it's a block wireframes call to actions and then i just pulled in this one so this is a heading, subheading, or a description, and just a button. And this is what we have. Heading, subheading, or description, and just a button. And then the last one is just an empty block with some paragraph text in it. OK, so block, wireframes, empty, bam, like that. And then as an element, I will just place in a paragraph text. Very simple. I'll just delete this part. like that and then center it also i can do the the block to be a bit bigger so that we don't lose it on the on the page like that and we are done guys that is it these are the building blocks of our of our site now we can just put in our images we can put in our uh, color spacing and then we are actually good to go so now before i start styling it i will come over here to the comment section and then see what people were asking so i have kisha fox hi david how did you get the styling bar to lock and not overlay your workspace workspace um so how do you mean styling bar you mean this one or whenever you whenever I'm typing something, maybe this one, I'm not quite sure what you mean, but yes. So I have this one on the side. Usually when I click on text, this is usually below it. Sometimes when you are working with small elements, like, um, like for example, an icon, you can actually not see it because there is this drag and drop thingy, but 
I know that my icon is chosen, it is saying over here, so I can just work with the sizing and the text element and with the text style and that is it. So Carol is asking what you did with the space in the middle. The option is not available if I'm in styleable element, correct? I'm struggling to align a video. Um, I'm not quite sure what you mean by what did you do with the space in the middle? So in case you want to space something so that everything is center aligned inside the, the middle of the, of the container, you need to click on the container itself. In case you're working with styleable elements, most of the time it will not be working. Let me try to, for example, do it with this part. So inside the container, I have a heading, subheading, and then also this element over here. If I come, and I know that I'm in a container, which says here container. I come and click on the layout, and then I click vertical center. Everything is center vertically, but because this is text, it is aligned on the left. So this was a, a bad example to show only with text, but in case you have like images and all kinds of things, this is the option you would need to use to center everything inside a container. In the styleable element, this will not be aligning. Uh, the big one on the right. So usually this is over here for me. I don't know if you're working with a, with a smaller displays, with a smaller um, like laptop or something. If it is not over there all the time, for me, it, it is all the time over there. Whatever I, whatever I do, whatever I choose on the, on the page itself, it is always here, except when I actually act click out of it, and then I want to display the page to be big like that. Um, question, can you go over how to change the background again with a specific image, and can you change its transparency opacity? Yes, I can. I don't think that I have an image anywhere in the background with, with that, but maybe we can do this one first. Um, so I don't know who you are, Facebook user, if you would like me to see then please head over to streamyard.com forward slash Facebook. This will allow me to actually see who you are and then um, I can reply back to your questions with your name on it. But in case you would like to actually place an image in the background, we will style that together now. So I want the background uh, the, of this section to be an image. So I click on that container I come over here to the background section and then here image choose image okay and then i actually choose the image which i already imported which was this guy talking on the phone so it's just select and then you can actually style it here so you want to center it to to show from the top to show from the bottom you can do that here in case you want to actually have it uh, uh like you have now here, here is his arm, here is his arm, here is a chair, here is a chair again starting. This is because it is set up on repeat. In case you want no repeat, then it is actually showing up like that. You can also choose to cover so that the, the, the image is covering the sides of the, of the screen. You can set it up as you would like. In case you want transparency for some reason on, the, on there, you have this lever on most of the elements that you do. Um, so this is how you can set up transparency in case you also want to have an a color on top of this background you can just click over here on the in the background section color you just click choose a color let's do this ugly pink and then it is actually not showing up because we're in a container but it would show up once we place something in there but yes this is how you would do it good uh, can I write you when this training is over or can I send you a loom with the problem? Yes, please, Carol, please record a loom video and then please head, uh, send it to my messenger. I would be able to assist you there. Good. So, guys, we are going to be starting building out our page from top. So we will start with this logo. So I created a simple logo for this um, for this build and this is my lemon book logo over here. I will just select it update it is pretty big so i will not click anywhere else i still have my image selected i will come to the design section and then i would choose sizing with in pixels and then i can actually size it to the to the size i want i like it on 150 pixels and then this will be looking nice um in here i want to place my the image of my book 
So I click configure, choose image. This is my book over here. This is book mockup. Select, update. Now it is actually pretty big. So I want to also do it uh, to, to make it shrink it down, make it smaller. So I'm not clicking anywhere. We still have the image selected. So we go, uh, go to the sizing and we can do the same either with the width or we can also work with the height. So with the height, you can also decide how high, how tall you want the, the image to be. So something like that is looking cool on the desktop devices. And let me try to click out of it. So I'm in the container and then in the layout, let's try to put it in the center. So now you see I placed it vertically center. So now it is it is centered in the middle vertically. If I would put it on the on the left hand side or the right hand side, it will be moving there, but I want it to be in the center of this container. Perfect. So now I will go and actually size the this heading. I'll copy over the, the text from my demo side that I created earlier, paste it in, and then select both of the texts. Um, there was an update. Let me just reveal my face again a bit. So there was an update last week where it actually, when you have different parts of the text like I have, so this first sentence is here, and then there is uh, the enter button pressed, and then the other part is going below. So as you saw, it lost the, the styling. And this is the, the reason is that you can now design one block of text differently. So this is one text element, as you see, inside the, the green um, highlight, this is one text element. However, the upper text that is white and the, and the bottom text, sorry, that is black, we can style differently. So for example, I choose this text. I want this to be Oswald. And I want this to be, for example, orange and this size of the font like that. But the upper text, it's, it's still one element, one text element. We can still size it differently. So I want it to be Poppins. I want it to be, um, okay, it didn't change to Poppins, let me see. Okay, I will select it one more time here. Poppins, here we go, now it is changing. It is white, I want it to be bold and I want it to be this big. You see, now it, we can style one element differently and this is what the update from last week did. So you can come in and actually style it as you would like. You don't have to pull in different text elements. I was usually working with different different text elements. I was pulling them on, on the page, but at this time we don't need to do that anymore because we can style them separately. However, I want both of my uh, text. Okay, so this one also to be uh, Poppins and I want it to be bold and I want it to be white. Awesome. Once I select both of the text, I can uh, just resize them as I want. And I think 3REM is looking quite nice. Good, so over here, I don't have that much text. So I'll just copy over the text that I have on this demo page. I will double click so everything is selected and I will just paste in my text. I will change the font to Poppins and I will play with not the white color, but this grayish color. So the second one from this next to the orange, between the orange and the pink, the second one from the bottom. Good, this is looking quite nice. And then my button, I will style my button once and then I will use the same button on different places on the page, here, 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 and then here as well. Okay, so I want the button to have a background color of this yellow. Or actually we can copy over this yellow that I used here like that and use that one instead. Bam. Here we go. So this is my button. I wanted the text to be in Poppins font. I want it to be bold. And I want it to say download that and maybe a bit smaller but I want the sides of the 
between the, the the start of the button and the text where it starts i want this part to be a bit wider so in the spacing i can see that there is already some styling done so it says one rem i will just click on the both sides where it says one rem and i will just make it a bit bigger Maybe like that two rem looks good and then also i will size the top and the bottom of the button like that 0.75 this looks good so here in the borders i actually want it to have the corners rounded so i will just pull this lever until the end until it is fully rounded and now our button looks like this it is looking pretty similar to the one that i have over here um only on this one it is the font is or color one two three four five six six times the number three this is our gray color that we are using good so now we actually pulled in all the elements we changed over everything we'll just work on the sizing a bit later on let me just see if there are any questions that i need to answer can we create folders with an image library to keep organized at this moment kisha it is not possible um this is a feature request if you go to feedback.groovefunnels.com feedback.groovefunnels.com it is in the groove pages feature request uh library enhanced media library or media library both of these are actually um asking for the same thing so you can go in then upvote uh, any of these they are talking about the same thing that you are mentioning now um let's see francis is asking a question is it possible to import one of the funnels i own from click funnels to the group funnels and then change the elements from there or do i have to rebuild it from scratch inside group funnels so francis i uh, i highly suggest you to go through either this uh, training or any other trainings on Monday that I usually do where I actually build out the full page just take one of these videos take one hour of your time and build it out yourself you will learn how to use the software and then once the import feature is inside the, the app at this point it is not available yet if you will see it once it once you're creating a new page there will be a uh, an element over here which will say um, import URL it will be quite big you will not be able to miss it and then once it's there then you will be able to import automatically your uh, click funnels uh, funnels at this point you would need to rebuild them manually highly suggest you to test out the software just so that you get the hang of it and then later on when you imported your funnels you will know immediately and exactly what you would need to do um this is my blog page how to convert funnel marketing please help i i'm not able to see what you're doing and i don't suggest you to to um share your links because this is not the place for you to share links if you have questions please ask them in the group but don't share your links this could get you in trouble when changing sizes uh, size of images uh, like the book does the total size change as you enlarge or reduce which i imagine could affect the load speed um when changing size of the image like the book does the total size change so what i did is i actually imported a small so 700 by 1016 pixels this is a 200 kilobytes image if you import big images like 4000 something it will be bigger in size so it will load load slower when you once you are actually changing it to a smaller device it is not changing the the color the the image you can do it using the the training that i did where you hide actual uh, elements on the page let me show you what you would need to see michael so hide um elements elements groove pages hiding elements elements on different sizes uh, screen sizes inside groove pages this is what you would need to see and then you can actually um, for example once you are reviewing uh, you once you are viewing the page in mobile don't load this image but another image which is smaller but on desktop load this image you can set up this kind of things using the video that i did hiding elements on different screen sizes in groove pages 
Um, you can find it on YouTube. I highly suggest you to, to search uh, for this kind of keywords uh, on YouTube. YouTube has a very powerful search feature which can find uh, things inside the description of our videos. So this is why I usually search on here. Um, I saw your video of hiding elements. Nice, but the feature is not working. It is working. The, I actually created a video on it. Maybe you're not doing something properly, but it is actually working. Once you click on it, you can choose the layout. You set it up as none. And in the other sections, other devices, you set it up to be showing as a block or display. And it, it will be working. Um, OK, so this is answering on questions. Let me just go and build out the, the lower part. So here, we can see that there is a header or heading. I'll just copy over this text over here. Paste like that. We want it to be pop-ins like that. I want it to be of a smaller size. Um, Carol, I'm not going to be doing this in the live video. So in case you have trouble, you can open a support ticket uh, and ask for help, but I'm not here to actually bet on th things like this. So three, 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 three. Okay, this is the color I want to use. And then I am missing a subheading over here. So this text I will copy and then pull in just a paragraph text to be my subheading just below the, the heading itself, like that. And then I will double click and just change it over to this one. Okay. Like that. And then center it. Over here, this heading actually has a big spacing. So I'll just remove this spacing so that it is showing up a bit nicer. And also, this one has a bit of, it is actually still pushing it down, but doesn't matter. I will work with it as I can. Um, so Poppins, I will change the subheading to Poppins. And then um, brum, brum, brum. I want to change the font color to a lighter grayish looking. I think this one is looking nice. OK. Good. So. I'm not quite sure why my text is still having this this padding over there. I removed everything from it, but we'll just work with this like that. Oh, I cannot move it because it is actually hiding it. Um, we'll just leave it as it is. And then below this one, I want to start working on these parts. So start instantly will be my first heading over here. Paste, start instantly. Ooh, I know. So I click here and then press the delete button. It was not the spacing, it was actually an enter pressed inside here. So this is what I did and now I have it back. Start instantly is also going to be Poppins font. And then my font color will be actually six times the number three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Like that. And then I want the font to be a bit smaller. Perfect. I will immediately save this as a feature title. OK. And then over here, I can just come and then paste in the feature title styling. Um, for some reason, it is not applying the colors, but I will just type in again like that. And then we can go on to the next one. We will also click on it, and it will be um, smaller now. Here, global style, feature title. Here we go. Let's see, 333. Three, three. OK. And then here, this description, I want it actually to be in pop-ins as well smaller like that and then some other text font like that is looking good let me see on this one it actually is a much lighter version of it so i'll just use this one as the color also i will click inside here 
global styles, create a new style for feature description, like that. Can one change a default font for entire page? Um, Viron, at this moment, it is not possible. Um, it will be a good feature to have, but at this moment, it is not an option yet. Um, feature description. Okay, I will try to click out, clicking back in. For some reason, it is it is applying the, the style. But we need to click out and click back in, like that. Okay, um, now I can work with the with the icons. I want my icons. Um, this one will need to be. I think I actually found it somewhere at the beginning over here. Here we go this one bold so it is a uh, called bold like that I will leave it at 4 Excel and I will copy over this color from here like that and then I will choose the text so once you select an icon you can come to the text section and edit it from here it is pretty confusing I know but most probably when an icon is selected we will just see here uh, designing or something icon design later on I will request this as a feature because text while editing an icon makes it a bit confusing so this is our lightning over here we have chess so we'll just either scroll down to find it or we can try to no here we go that one text apply the color here bam we have it on here we have a rocket so click on this one and then over here rocket bam. We can also add on the color here we don't have to go into the text if we don't want to that and then we can just update come to design and then actually it should update here we go um, now I'll just put in the text, have an advantage, here we go, like that, so it is putting in another uh, space using the enter uh, key, keyboard button, but we can just delete that one and then our spacing will be looking nice, like that. Ooh. Come on. Out, click back in, and then here we go. Okay, perfect. So this is our feature section. We will be doing some styling with some spacing from here and then at the bottom, but let's just continue editing this this page. So this divider, we can edit using the borders. You can also come in into the configure tab over here and then set it up here, but using the borders, it is actually making it a bit easier. So we can choose either dotted, dashed, or a, a solid line uh, that we want to use. And then over here, we can just choose the color that we want to use. And then I want this light color. It is actually very simple and very uh, not eye-catching. It is not... You can see that the, the different parts of the page are divided, but it is not uh, pulling on uh, pulling your eyes to look at it. Uh, okay, so then over here, we will also put in these details, and then we will just simply put in our feature title, styling like that, and then just paste in our text and make it a bit bigger. Here is what is included. like that okay now this one we can add on the feature description click out click back in this clicking out and clicking back in this will be fixed uh, very soon but at this point it is just a workaround um, on here we have a bigger text so I'll just increase the size of it like that and then here we are working with an icon that will be yellow. We are working with this feature uh, title and then the description. So let's just edit the, the title and the description first. Title over here. 
global styles description over here, but we want to make it like that uh, on the left hand side. And then once we click on the icon itself, over here, we can just increase the, the size of, the, of it using the text element. Let's just put it on 225. And then I can choose something like book, that, apply the yellow color that I want to use, like that one, but from here. Actually, this is the different color than our book, so let's just use the book color so that our colors on the page are um, the same. Like that. Okay, perfect. And then over here, as you can see, well, let's click out. So our book is starting where the description is starting. However, I want to achieve this look so that our book is here and then the title and the description are starting from from a bit in line. So this is what we will be working now. So I want to click on this element. This is the text element. You see that only the green outline is around the description that we have. And using the spacing, I can push that inside with the margin. So on the left-hand side margin, I just use this one and to push it inside a bit. And now I still need to, I still need to add some margin on it let's have a look a little bit more three actually let's put it back to 2.5 it was looking much better there here we go so this is now something that we uh, did we can also click on the icon itself and then do some um do some padding or margin on this side we should have done that first. So, and then come back to the, the description and then move it like that. Can you move it like this? Yes, we can. So now we have this one done. We can see that the title text needs to be a bit smaller. And then the description also a bit smaller like that. And then we can just click and choose the whole whole container you can see the container that is choosing the description the title and the icon click duplicate and bam we have it we have it here now we can choose just the icon we can swap the icon to a different um, something like let's just put this Christmas tree for no reason because it is looking so cool um, most probably nobody will be using this Christmas tree in their designs, so I just don't want it to feel bad because of nobody is using it. So now we have these two, we want to probably space them a bit. So using the spacing margin, we just move them away from each other like that. Let's put in our, um, our mock-up of the tablet, which is this one. Select update, and then let's work on the on the design a bit. So as you can see here, there is this green outline and there is the blue outline over here. So we see that there is some spacing inside, and this is 175. Let's just remove it. This will make our image instantly bigger. We can also, um, yeah, let's just leave it as it is. I think I like it, how it looks like this way. But we will go on to the next section. I know that I know this is different than what you are discussing, but it has to do with publishing on my domain. I successfully linked my domain to Groove. I'm creating another page, and when I try to publish to my domain, it gives me an error saying that the domain is already on there. Isn't it supposed to be published with my domain and page name? Can you show me with your sites you are building how you do that? Not sure what I am doing wrong. Thanks, my friend. I successfully linked my domain to Groove. I'm creating another page, and when I try to publish to my domain, it gives me an error saying that domain is already on there. So I'm not quite sure what you are doing, Rob. If you are doing what another uh, client was doing, that he actually didn't uh, didn't do pages over here, but he created separate sites as his pages. Uh, so he went into Groove Pages, and then he had one for his domain. 
So for example, this is my uh, site that I'm working on. And I want to have uh, terms and conditions. You don't come over here and start a new site, but inside, inside this site, you just create a page. Um, this was the other customer's problem that he actually created another site for his page. You need to come to pages, create your page over here, and then your domain will be the root domain. So you don't publish another. So this page, you don't need to publish to over here, like mysite.com forward slash something. You just need to leave it as it is. So mysite.com and you just press the publish. So this, this, and it will be handling everything. If you created a my, my uh, so page two, it will be mysite.com forward slash page minus two. So don't put anything inside here, just your root domain. It needs to say .com, .net, .something, the last. So it, after the .com or after this last part of your domain, it, there shouldn't be anything in there. So this was uh, an issue that a customer had that I was helping, uh, helping um, with over the weekend. If you're doing something like that, then this is your answer. Um, can you create the global style for el any element? You can, yes. Observation, when you when we move the padding and margin sliders uh, all the way left, it doesn't remove. You have to stop the slider at zero, yes, which isn't all the way the, the left anymore. Yes, I am. Um, I know this one, I reported this one already, but this is not being changed at this point because we will have very soon the different drag and drop features for the padding and margins. So they are working on that one and not actually fixing this because um, this bug happened when we started doing that uh, padding and marging using your mouse uh, feature. So once this feature comes out where we can actually click on an element and then drag it up and down the page and then left and right, uh, then this will be actually not a problem anymore. Good, let's just come over here and then style this, uh, this block. So over here, we already pasted in our image. We'll just leave it as it is. And then over here, we want to actually style this. So we need to add on a background color and then above the author, just copy this text as the title over here, paste about the author. Let's just delete everything that is below and apply the global style of the feature title like that. I don't want it to be on the, in the center, so I'll just move it back over here. And then let's click out, let's click back in and it didn't apply the bold button. Now we have it. About the author, it is uh, a bit bigger. So all these demo sites that you're creating in your videos, are you saying you are buying new domain for each or how are you publishing them using the domains you already have? I don't publish them using my domain. I just push them to a Groove Pages hosted domain. For the training videos that I am creating, I just host them over here. In case I am doing a site for myself, then I buy a domain and just publish it over here. And yeah, that is it. You can also, you don't have to buy for each of the sites that you create. You don't have to buy a separate domain. You have Groove Pages hosted domains. You have your subdomain that you set up. Mine is lemon at this point. So it will be lemon.groovepages.com. And then if you name your site, for example, um, book lander, this is for landing page, and then you publish it, this will be the actual, actual domain. So once you click on it, once it is published, it will be lemon.groovepages.com forward slash book lander. So this is what I usually do for my training videos. I don't purchase separate domains. Um, okay, let's just build it, this page out so that I also have some bonus that I want to try to share with you for today's um, training. Um, a lot of people could benefit from that. So over here, global style, 
feature description, okay? I just want to put it on the side like that. And then over here, we will just pop in our signature, which is over here. Bam. There we go. So now I want to add the container. I want it to be colored like that. And then we can space it out. So we can just come into the spacing and add some paddings like that. Let's just leave it at six. We can deselect that. And the margins, we can just, not the margins, the padding, we can just move it a bit from the from the side of the page. And then on the, on the text itself, I want to apply padding from this side so that my text is aligned more to the center. Good, so this is actually how it is on there. We'll just go in and space it out a bit later on, but let's just continue with the testimonials. So over here, I'll copy testimonials, and then you see I need to add on here another section, which will be another container over here. Here, I will just pull in a H3 element. I will click on the container itself. I'm choosing the container, layout, vertical, Bam, bam. So this way, center in the on the horizontal and then the vertical view. Now my text is straight in the middle. I'll just pop in testimonials and then edit styling using the feature title. And then that is it. Let's click out of it. Maybe increase the font like that. Um, the color is is correct. And then over here, I want to just style them a bit. So in the borders, I can add on a border all around this one testimonial, uh, one pixel, and I will choose just a light gray, something like that. Also over here, borders around everything with its one pixels. Light gray. Okay, I'll just do these two and then copy over the styling to the third one. And over here, I want this one to be a bit smaller. So in the sizing, pixel, like that. This one will have the styling of our description. Let's click out, click back in, bam, there we go. And in the images, I'll just, I just found some images uh, from people, I just typed into free stock photos, I just typed in portrait, and this is how I found these people. So she will be our Jane Doe. We'll apply the feature title like that. Oops, not delete, but let's just go back to this one. Jane Doe, and then in here, I want to apply the feature description. Let's click out, click back in, there we go. Good, so it is looking pretty good. Maybe a bit darker color on that one. And yes, so I think this is looking good. Um, background needs to be like that. And inside here, I want it to be white. Then again, shadows. As you can see on here, oh, it is not adding on shadow. It doesn't matter, let's just leave it as it is without the shadows. Oh, I shouldn't have closed it. Um, I'll open it later on. Because I'm, I'm having two different uh, parts where I have these, these blocks, these uh, columns, and I was actually styling this, this one. This will be having the shadows. Let me just go back inside the the other one and reopen it. I will try to explain this question. My site is hosted on SiteGround with SSL. If I create custom do custom subdomain here, can SSL uh, still work? It shows today as insecure till uh, today still. So in case your subdomain is um, insecure, I'm, I'm not quite sure on, on this one. We would need to test this out. It is not 
a frequent thing that people have their domains and everything on site ground. So we'll need to test it out. If you can somehow get your uh, name servers pointed to Cloudflare and from there you actually have your site, uh, your main pages uh, on on your WordPress or your site ground hosting, you can actually have your subdomain also have SSL through Cloudflare. I'm not quite sure how it would work with just um, site ground. Domain is registered on HostGator. Okay, awesome. So from HostGator, just um, point it to Cloudflare, and then from Cloudflare, you can uh, you can manage the subdomains and everything. This would be the best that you could do at this point. Um, okay, good. So I'll just apply the styling over here. Click out, click back in. There we have it. Just the darker, maybe a bit smaller. Actually, not smaller. Like that. And then this will be sized to 60 pixels. like that and then over here as well global styles feature description and then just the darker shade here we go um, good I will just choose the images this lovely looking lady is going to be another Jane Doe so I'm going to choose the feature title for her name here we go. Endo, and then over here, instead of group pages, it will be, actually, I will not change the group pages. I'll just apply the styling. Again, instead of John Doe, in this style, we will add in our style, like that. And we will add on this lovely gentleman from the stock photos, this one, like that. And then this one will have our description. Bim, bam. There we go. So this is our testimonials. Let's just go on and edit the pricing. So the pricing, this one was the one that I thought that I'm creating. It has a gray background, but the, it, the boxes itself are white. Okay, so Laura Mipson, let's just copy this one over pricing well, actually it is already here so this is all in gray we'll just apply our styling feature title click out click back in there we go let me just increase the, the font over here global style feature description click out click back in there we go and then just a darker color and now inside here we want to have uh, the white background and we also want to have a shadow so the shadow I will put medium so now it's looking like that it's looking pretty cool but the border is pretty dark and I don't like it so I'll just use this one and now it looks much better so the last thing I want is to have not rounded corners but straight edges so on the corners I will just drag it towards the middle a bit and now we have this um, straight corners and from here I can save the styling of our pricing box I will click on this container and then choose pricing box it is going to be applying the, the features so shadow the corners as you saw and then over here as well pricing box let's click out click back in and now we have the shadows we have the the corners and everything okay so the icons need to be yellow on here i will just choose uh, some document i think paper let's just use let's just use the pdf for the first one like that and then apply the the yellow color 
from here. Okay, so it is slowly coming together, guys. I know that this could take a bit of time and it could be boring watching it, but the once you learn it, it will be pretty simple to understand it later on. So I encourage you highly, if you could just do one of these uh, builds yourself before this um, feature of importing funnel comes in, you would learn so much that you would actually know what you would need to do later on when it comes out. It is very important that you are understanding what button does what, where you would need to click in case you want to fix this, in case you want to fix that. So this is absolutely necessary for you to, um, to be familiar with the builder itself. Good, so this is out. Now I will just paste in my style for the feature title, click out, click back in like that and it is actually saying ebook it is not so big ebook and i'll just use this like that yeah let's just leave it as it is Awesome. So I will now click on this one where it is actually choosing the the dollar and the amount itself, and I will save it as a style. Let's create new style price. Okay, and I will edit this one over here. So I will delete it from here, and inside this one, I will just type in dollar. Okay. Now I click outside to choose both of these elements and this is where I apply my price and it is not changing for some reason so let's just go in and style it ourselves so bold this one also needs to be poppins and also needs to be one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so Rob is actually answered to the question. My hosting company said that if you direct, you lose the SSL. You have to send Cloudflare, uh, you have to send to Cloudflare and that solves it. I had that problem, really easy to do. Correct, so this is what my suggestion was. Um, question from Carol, when you set up a style, can you use it on any page of your site or is it only for that page? It is not only for that page, it is only for this site. So let's say I saved something over here. Now in the global style, I have one, two, three, four, and then I create another page and I can actually, let's just pull in something like that. Over here, once you click, you will still have the global styles because it is inside one of your sites. In case you would go out there and now edit a different site, it would not have this styling anymore. Okay, so I'm here editing my pricing. Over here, I want to, why am I clicking over there? Um, over here, I want to add on the feature description. Let's just click out, click back in. Awesome. And then the button, I will actually just copy over my button that I designed already here and then duplicate and then click and drag it over here to our pricing. Okay, like that. So this one I can delete. And then from here, it is pretty simple to just duplicate two more, click drag click drag like that very awesome i'm very happy with this one what i have until now um okay so this is styled now let me just quickly do this one i wish i would have some music in the background on my on my monthly builds that would look so cool um i mean for the people that are watching a, a replay and for you guys of course but Um, yeah, I would need to think of something that actually 
has music that it is not boring while I'm building this out. I'm trying to speak all the time so that there is some point in me doing this as a as a live stream. Um, but yeah, I think you guys enjoy it, and then you enjoy the, the final final product that is actually the the final page. There was a lot of people that cannot from the templates or the from the wireframe blocks they cannot imagine how a page could look like but um yeah it is it is just something you need to get used to once you work with uh, a lot of these designs a lot of these pages you kind of start imagining the the, the possibilities when you see an empty block so this is kind of cool um okay so here i have said copy that and then I want the color to be this yellow from my book that design and then let me just jump in back again here we go and then over here I actually have a book that. but up but up good so i will save this style as well so that i don't need to um i'll just type in description this needs to be a description and this needs to be the description like that and then it needs to say soft copy hard copy soft copy hard copy Herman is saying, please show how to have social proof widget. There will be a video on, on that tomorrow. I will do a video on this one tomorrow. The social proof widget in this video, I will not be talking about that. Uh, Twitch background music is nice. Yeah, I'm thinking about doing something like that, but I don't do a lot of these builds only on Mondays, and then I kind of have things to say, so I don't know how it would look like with that. Is there an option to upload HTML versus what you see is what you get? Um, you can upload HTML. You just click on this one, and then you actually import the code of your HTML inside the builder. Most probably, it will not be editable. But for example, once you have the um, once you have that import feature in Groove Pages, it will be actually kind of easy to design or uh, pull over your HTML sites and actually make Groove Pages import the HTML site. Um, it just needs to be online somewhere. So let's say you have an HTML page from somewhere else. You import it here using the, using the source code feature and then publish it on a Groove Pages hosted domain. Once you did that, it will be actually available online. And then uh, you can just use the import feature later on, which will be getting the getting the page imported so that you can choose what to do with it good so this is now my price i will just uh, space it out a bit uh, headline right here to visitors i think i didn't change anything here the only thing is that i applied the styling of the feature title and then i made it bigger and made it white like that over here i did the same with the feature description click out click back in and i just changed it to this kind of color and then there's a background so i'm in the in the block section i will be setting up the background to be my brand black or dark, dark color so one two three four five six three the number trees the button i'll just duplicate and pull it in from from above here and then this is approximately it i will be just styling it a bit later on over here it's pretty simple i just typed in a paragraph text uh, copyright 2020 david lemon you can actually put in here your um your different uh, links to 
privacy policy and terms and conditions and things like this, but I didn't do it because I wanted to keep the 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 build simple. And let's just see. So this is the the font. I will pop it into the. There we go. So this is the color that I want to use. It is looking nice. And that's approximately it. Now, so now we have our site uh, set up with the content. Now we just need to go in there and actually space it out. Um, is there a feature that allows the user to share the page on Facebook, for example? How do you mean share the page on Facebook? Um, do you mean like a, a social share uh, widget that you have on different blogs, like share the content, uh, click, and then it will be sharing to, to Facebook? If you're looking for a widget like this, we don't have that. This is mostly done for blogs because blogs are uh, more shared online. Nobody will uh, share a sales page like that on Facebook. But when we will have a blog, most probably uh, we'll have that feature. Uh, what about importing or sharing pages like ClickFunnel has? Importing will be an option. Sharing will also be an option. Good, so let's just go ahead and style it. So I will click on the block and inside the spacing, I want to have a bit of, not margin, sorry, padding. I want to have a bit of black uh, or this dark gray uh, on the top. Then I will click on this to layout two by two, and then I will push this down a bit using the margin like that. And then from here, I can click on the book itself and then push it down using the margin. Oh, the margin. Why is this changing the size? Um, let me just see how I did it. Oh, I think I did this one. So block, and then I actually did the negative margin on this one. Nope. Hmm. What I, I'm trying to achieve this uh, this look over here that the book is actually going down. Yesterday when I was doing it, I just I just clicked on the on the book itself and then using the spacing, I just pushed it down. So let me see if I can do it this way. No, um, using the margin it doesn't work, and then using the, the padding it is giving us something else. So let's just try to push down the whole container. I think this is what I did yesterday. No. 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 So guys, I'm not quite sure why is it giving us this error. I think because I set this up as inline flex. Let's try it again. So this is just um, finding a solution in front of you. This was not planned, but um, <laughs> Let me just jump in to the other page that I created just to see um, how it was set up. Okay. <clears throat> so I click on the book and you can see that there is some margin from the bottom. So I was actually pulling the book over to the other page using this type of thing. So let's just come over to the page that we're creating together and let's try that out together. So only the image is selected. So see here, image, spacing, margin, negative. It's actually going over for some reason. I'm not quite sure why is this, but in case it is not allowing us, I will just leave it out and then make probably an update on that. Let's just use flex one more time. Yeah, it is not changing for some reason. Let's just leave it as it is. It is also looking good. I wanted to do this hover effect, but it is actually not doing a lot of difference for me. Um, so yeah, I have now this highlighted in green. I will just push this down using the margin option. I want it to be a bit, uh, bit lower like that and then selecting the middle element. So there is 
one element over here, one element over here. I select the middle and I just space it out using the top and bottom margin like that. Okay. Maybe the top margin a bit less. Like that. But this is basically the, the look that I have over here. Okay. So let's just go on to the next one. Here on the top, we have a bit of more spacing and also on the bottom. So this is what I'm trying to accomplish over here, like that. And also space out the, the divider itself, something like this. So we have a pretty nice white part over here with a divider and then the other part coming. Uh, this is a z-index problem Chirag, Chirag is saying that's correct once i don't want to go into the code but if i um i can see that there is a z-index over here and minus one i didn't play with this one but even if I, <laughs> I i i didn't play with this one on this video i played in this with this um outside when i was not uh, live streaming and it didn't do any good so I already talked with the with the developers. They will be adding on probably somewhere over here, spacing or or somewhere in the layout a Z index, and this will make it simpler so that we can decide which content we want or what content we want on the top when we are drawing it, dragging it uh, over each other, and which one should go to the bottom. So this is the Z index for everybody that is not familiar with, and uh, Chirag is absolutely correct. Um, okay, so over here, my title and the sub um, subheading is, or this description is not very far away from each other. But from this, from the description, this one is quite uh, far. So I'll try to do this exact same thing. Over here in the spacing, let's just see if I still have any. Okay, so I don't have any spacing there. Um, I will leave this as it is. However, I want my text to be pushed in from the sides a bit so that it is more, more like this. Yeah, I like this one. So I just put margin on the on both of the sides of this text element, and I just pushed it from both of the sides so that the the text is going into into two lines, it looks a bit better. I will do the same on this one. So spacing, and I will just do some margin on the left and the right, so that it is actually showing up in three lines like that. You don't have to do this one on your side. I just think that it is looking a bit better. Like that. Okay, so on here I added on 0.25. Like that. Good. So this is now done. Let's just see. Yeah, it is looking pretty similar. And then over here, let's see what we still need to do. So we have a big tablet with here's what's included. This is spaced out. I just want to increase the size of this tablet. So I will come to the, the spacing I, as I deleted this one already, like that. And then also, if I want to have the, the whole thing a bit bigger, I can play with a sizing option. So I can set up this one to be a bit bigger. So not 80 or maybe 90 or this way my tablet is bigger and also the text is pushed more on this side. So now my tablet is looking a bit a bit better. Maybe I can use the negative margin and pull it up a bit so that my content is starting here and then ending here where actually this is inside the tablets bottom and top like that. Good. This is, I like it so far. Um, this part, we just need to space it out. So again, select the element in the middle, spacing, and then just push it up and down using the margins. Let's just leave it in two REM. I think this looks nice about the author section. Testimonials, we need to just make a bit of spacing over here. So this I will do using the block spacing padding like that. 
it's on the top and bottom, maybe a tree. And then inside the layout three by three by three, I want it to have a large or actually extra large gutter. The gutter is the spacing between the the, the columns itself. And now we increase it and it, it is looking more like divided. It is it is looking a bit better. Over here on the bottom, we still have to do a bit of, of padding because it is looking much better when we have enough space here at the bottom. So pricing, it is looking pretty similar already what we have over here. So pricing with text and only thing we need to do is make this a bit make it a, a bit taller and also the text a bit pushed in from the sides so what i would do is this is this the the middle element i will just space this out using the margin top and bottom like that Ooh, not the text itself but the whole thing spacing top and bottom margin like that one rem and i will do the same with this one so just do One REM from the top and one point, well, let's say two REM on the bottom. Good. This one I just want to push in a bit from the sides. Yeah, I actually like how this looks like. So we can now copy over the styling, but I'll just go in there quickly and then edit it. Ink it and then also on the top and bottom, I want it to be um, like that. So one REM. And over here on the bottom, we want it to be two. Also over here, select both of these spacing. And then I think we get it on one REM itself. Good. Spacing one, spacing over here, one, select this out, and then here we have two. Um, so now we still need to push this on the sides a bit until we have this. Good, so that is it also style this space it out top and bottom a bit 1.5 and then bottom a bit two here we go so it is looking now pretty similar to the one we have yeah so um that is it with the build itself it was pretty straightforward if if you were following it was very simple to do it but now i don't want to just leave you with this one i showed you how to create this awesome looking pages. We had some difficulty with this Z index, so I couldn't pull it over uh, the, the black part. However, you will still get the template that is actually uh, created using this layout. And also when you when you change it on different devices, it is, it is showing nicely. It is, yeah, we'll give you this template so you can use it after the video itself. However, what you would still be missing is how to actually create a cover for for your book like this one how to actually create a mock-up like this one so uh, this is what i mentioned at the beginning if if i uh, get to do the video and the build in an hour and a half and it is an hour and a half at this point um i will give you a bonus and this is what i want to <laughs> to share with you so boom time um, so this is a link that I will copy and paste it inside the Facebook group. Um, you can click on this one and this will actually get you to the, to some cool stuff. Let me see where the live stream is here. Okay. So once you are in there, you can just click on it. Click on it and actually you get to a folder that looks like this one. So you can use these mockups that I created 
uh, myself so you can use this on your designs if you are if you are trying out the same build that i created you can also use this but i included a, a psd of a tablet and a psd of a book cover which you can download and i will show you now how to actually use it so i will go ahead and create a book cover with you and i will create a, a tablet image with you together so you have now the the resources you can just download them and once you have them downloaded just come over here to photopea p-h-o-t-o-p-e-a in photopea.com like that i will drop that link as well inside the inside the the comment section in case you are seeing the the facebook comment the facebook post that i i did with the links please upvote it please like it so that everybody that will be watching the video later on can also have access to it so just please click like to these two links that i shared so that others will see it immediately once they come and see the video that would be very appreciated so just please like it or put a heart on it if you want yeah, so just download these PSD files and then you can import them into Photopea. Let me just show you how I have them. So first we will do a, a book cover like that. And then let me just move myself away. And then once you have the tablet also on your desktop, just pull it up here in this, in this browser like that. Bam. Good. So this is a book cover. Once you get in there, you will need to reveal everything that is. I can actually, I can actually not make it bigger for you guys. So just click on this eye over here. This will actually reveal the. Ooh, this will actually reveal the book itself. So it will be probably like that once you. Uh, once you just imported it, but click on this eye, this will show up the book. So over here, the thing that you're seeing is a folder. So Photopea is a actual Photoshop that is online. It is free to use and it is awesome. I do most of my logos, most of my mockups inside this one. I wanted to share it with you on how I created this, uh, this mockup for a book and also this mockup for this tablet. So we will create both of these together. So now we have the book mockup and inside this folder, once you click this arrow that is pointing to the right hand side, you will see a couple of different layers. So these are layers, which is similar when you have, for example, um, bread and Nutella and then another bread and then something else and then something else. So these are layers. So the higher the layer is, this is the, basically the bread on the top. This background at the bottom is the bread on the on the bottom. And then everything in between is what you put in. So if if it comes higher, it is coming on the top of everything. Let me just show you. So I put everything, so I put the background at the top, so I cannot see the book now. But if I if I move it in the back, then I can see my book. Um, so this is what I mean by layers. And in here, it is very simple. It says place design here. You just need to click on the place design here, but on this image itself. So click on this image. And here you see that the, that it was actually, that this book mockup was created by, by a couple of different layers. So there is some text over here. It says book mockup, lorem ipsum, and then over here, some rectangles. That you can move everything around in case you want. Uh, you can uh, allow auto select or auto select and then once you click on something it will be moving it away um, there is also background color so you need to be careful of that but once you click on something it will be actually moving it on the side and basically working so what i do is i just delete everything i just come over here and then delete everything i just leave this one over here is just a background color once you click on the on this tool over here which is just a rectangle you can press the u button on the on the keyboard and then this will show up you can select the fill color so this is where you actually set up the different fill color and then you can draw rectangles 
let me just show you. So here, I clicked and dragged, and I draw uh, a rectangle with the fill color that I have set up. So if you change it, if you change the color, it will be changing, uh, changing the color itself. But I want to create this actual bookmark. So I know that my yellow color is this yellow. So I will copy it over inside Photo P. Here I can paste in the hex code, and now this rectangle will be my background. So I came over here to select this arrow tool. I will move the rectangle that I draw. I drew. <laughs> Uh, and then just size it out so that it's covering everything. Now I can just come over here and delete this white one that I don't need anymore. So now this is my background. On my background, I, I have my logo, Lemon Book. So I will come inside and pull in the Lemon Book logo, which is over here, Lemon Book. I pull it in and then, and then immediately Photopea says where the middle is. You can also resize it by clicking this one, but once you once you just pull it, it will resize. Uh, it will not the styling will not stay. So once you click Shift and then you actually resize, it will actually keep the 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 sizing and then just resize as it is. However, I want it to be normal again. So I just click Control Z. I just undo. You have the edit and then undo redo. I clicked. Shift and now I can resize my logo over here like that. Good. So this is it. I can just press enter. Now this is applied. Here, if you press T on your keyboard or just come over here to type tool, you can just click somewhere. You will immediately see there is a text layer now on there. So in the text layer, you just choose the font that you want to. Uh, you want to work with you click on this deja vu sans and you just find the font so i know that my font is poppins so i click on poppins in here i want to select bold and i want my font to be pretty big so once i click two times on this on this t i can start typing um I cannot see it for some reason. Oops. I didn't mean to happen. Why is my text not showing up? It's here somewhere. Sorry guys, this is just a mishap. This was not planned, but I will figure it out for you. I want you to be able to actually create your own full mockups. Even if you don't create your own, you can create it in canvas or something like that. Just pull in the image of it and you just using this photo P you create the the mock-up. You don't have to actually create the the design itself. Let me just leave this out for now. So the this is the way you would need to do it, but I will just pull in my my other lemon icon. And I'll just resize it to be bigger. And this will be my mock-up. Okay. I will leave it out without the text. Actually let me try one more time with the text. It is making me now ah, because it is yellow it is not yellow i don't know what is happening i think the I think Photopea is having some issues, but anyway. So now I have it. Once you're finished with your uh, with your design, you can just click Save. So Control S. Once you're in Photopea, Control S. 
before just click this one and then control s now you will see smart object updated once you click out of it your book mockup will actually update so this is how it looks like you can remove the background and then add on over here um, you click right click blending option you can add on shadow so drop shadow you turn this on <clears throat> and then with this one you can decide where you would like the shadow to be so i want and the left left side and then lower over here you can also increase or decrease the opacity of the shadow as you're seeing it is a bit slow for me because i'm also live streaming size like that click ok now we have actually a very very slight shadow over here but i want to just cut out my book and just use the book itself like that so once you use the crop tool this one is the crop tool you select which part you want and then you can just click this check mark from here export as png it is pretty big size now so i would just resize it to for example 700 once you click out of it it will resize you can save it book cover mock-up and then use it instead of the image on the side that we created so i'll just choose another image pull in my new mock-up upload like that now it is uploaded so i select it bam bam here we go so let's just give it another go and just see if it will be if it will be going over there we go so <laughs> i don't know why is it not doing it now and before it wasn't but yeah we now have a slight shadow on our book we have our awesome book mock-up that we created together and it is here so let's just create another mock-up for this uh, for this tablet as you saw in the link i also shared with you the the tablet mock-up so you can just download this one and then pop it into photopea i have it up here and it is looking like that so i only want a tablet you can click on the eye to reveal or hide it i don't want the pencil i don't want any crystals and i don't want any background <clears throat> so i see that this is a folder so i click on this arrows it says place your design here so i just click on here where the design is it is the sim same thing you just pull, pull in an image or or create your design as i was showing you that successfully failed but i already created actually let, let let's together do um a mock-up so i will i will just take my dropper this is just a screenshot tool that i'm using and actually we will do a screenshot of the screen as it is now like that okay and i'll use this image inside the the mock-up itself so i will download this like that screenshot inside photo p i'll just pull it in resize it so shift and resize then it will be keeping the aspect ratio like that just place it in the middle bam press enter now that the, now the image is applied you can delete this place your design and as you remember control save so control s or command s smart object updated you can exit from here and we have now our tablet that is actually showing the the screenshot that we created so again using this crop tool i can just crop out the the tablet there is a slight shadow already on there so i will just make sure that i'm uh, not cropping straight where where the black part is so once you are done cropping press the check mark now we have the the actual uh, tablet cropped out export as png you can change the size of it so for example i want it to be i don't know let's put 800 with okay save 
tablet mockup. We come over to our site, we click on the image, configure, choose image, and then we just pull in the tablet mockup over here. Upload. And here we go. Select, update. And here is our tablet mockup. It is already the size that we set up to be. It is having these shadows around. You can see it is pretty cool with the with the lightning. There is a slight um, lightning effect, like it's it's that the sun is coming from here, and it is it is a bit darker on this side. So it looks cool. But yes, yeah, so this is how I created these mockups, and now this is how you can create it yourself. Um, it is pretty simple. You can use it using the downloaded material that I shared with you. Um, just come over to the to this Dropler folder that I shared. You have the tablet and uh, the book cover. Download it and then use it on your sites. So this is the bonus that I wanted to share. And now let me just share the template with you. I want you to have the template that, that I created previously and also um, set it up to be fully mobile responsive. And this is the link to it. So I will be sharing the link inside the Facebook comments and inside the YouTube as well. Here we go, guys. So this is what I wanted to show you and how we can create it. Do you have any questions on this build? I would love if I could answer your questions. If you have any, if you don't have any, I hope you learned something useful. I hope you learned how to design a page and to actually create your mockups for book and for the, for the tablet. It is pretty straightforward. It is not very complicated. In case you would need help, just rewatch the video. But you saw using the pre-made blocks, we actually created this uh, within an hour, hour and a half. So that is it, guys. This is what I wanted to share with you. I don't have anything else to say or share or teach for today's build. I hope you learned something awesome. And yeah. Hopefully see you in the group. In case you have any questions, you can anytime message me or post in the Facebook group. I will be happy to respond. So that's it. Thank you very much, guys. Enjoy your new templates. Bye-bye.